ओके ऑडिबल यामिनी अंकिता यस सो कमिंग टू द इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स Kozhi Kod, you know why it is in the news? It was recognized as the city of literature, and Gwalior as the city of music. Of course, Gwalior is having the distinction of prominent city of uh, uh, of music from time immemorial, maybe uh, from the initiation of the Hindustani music, and Hindustani music started in the period of Delhi Sultanate. okay in the in the islamic era and amir kusru is considered to be the one of the pioneer who is responsible for the hindustani music and you know amir kusru was uh, patterned by uh, popular delhi sultans like alauddin khilji and even giyasuddin balban and also and also not mbt father of mbt father of mbt giyasuddin tughlaq yes and you know amir kusro what is the work what is the prominent work of amir kusro mr what is the popular work of amir kusro ya tarike ala ar kajain ulfutu nuh sipir deval devi kijar khan etc so and in course of time hindustani music uh, got uh, few changes based on the local conditions and local requirements and local taste of the ruler accordingly local dialects in the hindustani music developed in the same way a dialect named uh, gwalior garana in hindustani music the the dialects were called as the garanas so gwalior garana was started so you have to remember hindustani music it is a classical music and even carnatic music it is also classical music and uh, there are lot there is lot of difference between the hindustani music and carnatic music which we have discussed in our routine classes okay yes and even uh, amir kusru is credited with uh, uh, the discovery or inventing the tabla and sitar okay yes now kozhikode a city in kerala and gwalior a city in madhya pradesh have been included in unesco's creative cities network so these cities were chosen to represent specific creative fields with kozhikode falling under the category of literature gwali under under music now take the example of hyderabad from where our uh, 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 so class is casting hyderabad is known for the culinary hyderabad biryani pista sorry halim extremely sorry halim the best of gis is the halim hyderabadi halim many things and hyderabad is known for different varieties of eateries okay yes now indian cities that are part of this network varanasi music srinagar crafts and folk arts hyderabad gastronomy which is nothing but cookery not gastroenterology it is different it is a disease and even hyderabad is also famous for gastroenterology Asian Institute of Gastroenterology Endocrinology Dr Nageshwar Reddy Jaipur Crafts and Folk Arts and Chennai Music okay and uh, and Kozhikode is known for prominent writers from long period and the city has a history of significant literary contribution with the first malayalam novel kundalata being authored there in 1887 of course you may get in this question and when you come to the um, this concept it was started in 2004 by 
UNESCO. Now it consists of 350 cities over a hundreds, hundred of countries. It, its purpose is to encourage cooperation among cities that recognize creativity as a key element for sustainable and you have to use this cre creativity to combat the challenges. The challenges may be in the form of climate change or even uh, um, what do you say, uh, racial conflicts, etc. So this creativity should be used for positive purpose. I mean, that is the aim of uh, um, giving this recognition to such cities. And uh, categories include crafts and folk arts, media arts, film, film, design, gastronomy, literature, and music. Yes. Now, British 2023 British Academy Book Prize, Nandini Das. So, the... Um, Award was given to the, I mean, Nandini Das. And uh, that book deals with what concept? What is the concept involved in, her, in that book? Anybody? Yes. Excellent. Akhil Sri Garu. Yes. India, India born author Nandini Das has won the 2023 British Academy Book, book Prize for Global Cultural Understanding. And receiving a prize of uh, Great Britain pounds 25,000 for her book, Coating India, England, Mughal India and the Origins of Empire. And how the British Empire started in India and it, it dealt with uh, uh, how many ambassadors came to India in that period like you were having the Thomas Rowe. And before Thomas Rowe, you were having the William Hawkins. And Thomas Rowe and William Hawkins came to the Mughal court in the period of in that period, who was the king? Jangir was the king, and even Jangir called Jangir nicknamed uh, William Hawkins has Jangir nicknamed William Hawkins has. Yes, excellent. From online side, Jangir called William Hawkins has. Yes, English Khan. Yes, English Khan. Okay, yes. So, quoting India, England, Mughal India and the origins of empire, try to remember. The book provides a fresh perspective to the origins of British empire, no doubt. Through the story of the first English ambassador to India in the 17th century, of course, no. Because before Thomas Rowe also in 1608, we are having the William Hawkins. Thomas Rowe came to India in 1615, if I am not wrong. Even before Jangir also, in the period of Akbar, many, uh, many Europeans came, but they are not ambassadors. They came to India to preach their, go I mean, gospel. Like we are having Father Montserrat, etc., who was uh, the tutor for Akbar's son Murad, if I am not wrong. Even Akbar was also inclined to the Christianity, to some extent. And you know, Akbar was secular and he was religious tolerant. And even he instated, he started his own uh, own religion, Dinya Ilahi. And even Ibadat Khana, which is called as Parliament of Religions. And on each day, he used to listen uh, the preachings of different religions. And even I told you, uh, at Bulan Darwaja, on the top, there are verses praising the uh, uh, Jesus. Okay? Yes. Now, see, uh, Thomas Rowe, the prize recognized work of non-fiction that contributing to understanding different world cultures and their interactions. So just now I told you, before Thomas Rowe, you were having the William Hawkins. And uh, these people, uh, Thomas Rowe and William Hawkins, were sent to India by the then Emperor of uh, Britain, James I. And James I. And actually, this uh, William Hawkins was an excellent, uh, I mean, navigator. And uh, even if I am not wrong, uh, the ship, uh, the name of the ship, the name of the ship 
which was uh, i mean uh, i'm led by captain william hawkins what is the name of that ship which was uh, led or commanded by captain william hawkins of course i don't know and we have not discussed that in our i am routine classes we have discussed about the globe under the under the uh, uh, globe in 1611 under the commandership of captain hippens which came to masli patnam and uh, of course they could not uh, establish their settlement for a long period because of the ship population from the dutch okay no globe is wrong globe is a ship excellent hector excellent varsha hector varsha and jagan excellent you remember on the roads you can see mg hector okay yes excellent excellent that is the hector now the british academy book prize established in 2013 formerly the naive al rodan prize so they will give a lot of statements nowadays questions with regard to facts is over all statements old name new name recognizes outstanding non fiction works in fields like humanities etc etc no issue no prestigious literary awards and their distinguished indian origin recipients like uh, for our quick revision and pulitzer prize awarded for excellence in various fields notable indian origins vijay sheshadri siddhartha mukherjee geeta anand zumpa lahri and uh, of course these people are credited with a uh, lot of literary works zumpa lahri of course any any person know about the book of zumpa lahri yes okay where where about yes name sake is a book of jumpal avare okay no issue now booker prize you know many indians got the booker prize indians or indian origin and you know salman razri we have discussed many times salman razri what is the book for which uh Salman Rushdie got the Booker Prize, and even if I am not wrong, even Booker of Booker Prize also that book got. Means for every five years or ten years, again they will select a book uh, which earlier got the Booker Prize. Booker of Booker Prize. Earlier I used to teach awards also, all awards in the class. Now of course you people will have the command to study them, study yourself. Okay. midnight children excellent midnight children and what is the other uh, any book which is uh, uh, so prominent with regard to salman rusdi any book you know yes satanic verses satanic verses and it 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 was opposed by islam community if i am not wrong and uh, uh, what is the book written by our uh, bengali author taslima nazrin i think satane verses belong to Sat taslima nazrin no 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 satanic verses 100% salman rushdie only her book is lajja lajja shame and vikandito vikandito is the book written by the taslima nazrin satanic verses salman rushdie so both uh, the books uh, are opposed by the 
Muslim community and Taslima Nazrin uh, Lazza and uh, Dikandito. Other book is Dikandito. Yes, and even excellent Rahul. Victory City also written by the Salman Rizdi. Yes, excellent Rahul. Yes. Chikai. Now, Arundhati Rai. Even we have discussed uh, this book. Which book of Arundhati Rai got the Booker Prize? Bhagwati, why tiger is uh, Arvind Adiga? Why tiger is Arvind Adiga? Why tiger is Arvind Adiga? Okay. Bhagavati, you corrected me when I told it as the white elephant. But today you are answering in a wrong manner. Okay. Arvind Adiga. And here, Arundhati Roy, the god of small things. The god of small things. And uh, Kiran Deshai? Kiran Deshai. Kiran Deshai. Kiran Deshai. Kiran Desai, remember the inheritance of laws. Kiran Desai, remember the inheritance of laws. And Arvind Adiga, just now, white tigers. Okay? Yes. Now, International Booker Prize honors translated literature work, only translated literature work. Geetanjali Sri. For Tomb of Sand 2022, in the last class, yesterday in the evening class, in the mains class, we have discussed Tomb of Sand when we were discussing about the partition literature in the evening class from our Ashoknagar branch. Partition literature. Retika Samadhi. Sand. Retki Samadhi or Retika Samadhi. It is also dealing with the partition literature. Okay? Yes. Excellent recollection by our students. And you know, Nobel Prize, Rabindranath Tagore. Now, next is, next is, hydroclimatic extremes. Yes, 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 yes. So now, in some areas, abnormal rainfall. In some areas, no rainfall. Okay? That is, and again, heavy rainfall region is again uh, resulting in the floods. Whereas, uh, low rainfall region is resulting in the drought. Both will cause loss to the mankind. Heavy rainfall will also cause loss to the mankind and also, uh, I mean, less rainfall. So, a recent study at Banaras Hindu University examined the impact of global warming on hydroclimate extremes. See, in Telangana, in the month of July, in some areas, the rainfall was 500% of the average. 500% of the average. In the month of June, no rainfall. In the month of August, no rainfall. It is of no use that uh, heavy rainfall in the month of July caused the havoc rather than benefit to the farm farmers or even common people. So, this is because of global warming. We are having climatic extremes. Even in some areas, the temperature has increased abnormally, especially northwestern uh, regions of the country. Yes. Hydroclimatic extremes are extreme events that can have sus substantial impacts on human societies and ecosystem. Yes, plants will die, animals will die, and uh, biodiversity will decline. 
so will face lot of problem impacts on human societies and ecosystem the events include floods drought heat waves etc etc everything the study used high resolution simulated precipitation data from the coupled model intercomparison projects of course it is a uh, system so they said that uh, western ghats and northeastern river basins will get abnormal rainfall and uh, other regions no rainfall while heavy rainfall intensity is predicted to increase over the upper ganga and indus basins so one region is getting more rainfall and uh, i mean lower ganga you are not having any rainfall okay so that sort of things will happen and uh, the research highlights an agricultural drought in the lower ganga basin due to a decline in main rainfall you know upper ganga middle ganga and lower ganga and lower ganga is known for the sundarbans so now why it is important because you have to make the policy accordingly you have to take the informed decisions that is very important okay yes it emphasizes the need for policy makers to develop strategies to manage water surplus or scarcity the, the study predicts a 4% to 10% increase in heavy rainfall over the western part of indian river basins western part will receive 4% to 10% see what they said is uh, just uh, uh, i mean negligible the percentage is, is negligible i told you the example of telangana in the month of july some parts in telangana received 500% increase in rainfall it is data from government of telangana and last year the average rainfall in telangana is 50% more yes 50% more it is because of climate extreme now take the example of hyderabad in hyderabad urban flooding is more since three or four years or five years and i told you what is the reason heat island we have discussed heat island okay yes and of course substantial impact on agriculture health and also socio economic conditions so if suppose if you, see if you are not having prosperous agriculture then automatically our economic conditions will get deteriorated farmers economic condition will will get deteriorated even the people who are not related to agriculture their economic condition will also get deteriorated now take the example of pyaz what is pyaz so these people don't know hindi also staying in hyderabad they are saying thirsty it is onion now the price of onion is 100 rupees or at least very near to century not out so what happened the consumer will not be happy because they have to spend more money from their pockets for the essentials when they spend more money from pockets for the essentials they will not have the money to involve in discretionary spending which will expand the economy that is the problem now take the example of usa why in usa the federal uh, the federal reserve is increasing the interest rate now uh, since two months they are maintaining the status quo but still why they have increased the interest rate to see that the inflation will be contained if not it is very tough even the house uh, even the uh, interest rate for housing loans in usa almost all equal to india they are also 8% in india also 8.75 or 9% and even sbi for women candidates are 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 for women it will give uh, loan for a lesser rate of interest okay yes so remember and uh, if there is no no agricultural production not only the farmers are impact, impacted but also every people will get impacted if tomatoes are see last one month back tomatoes went up to 200 rupees now onion is increasing now slowly slowly all vegetables are increasing and lentils take the example of red gram it is increasing bengal gram it is increasing so what happens so when we spend more money for essentials 
we will not have have money to involve in discretionary spending like celebrating first birthday in the banquet halls by spending 7 or 8 lakhs okay what happens that money is uh, uh, supplied to many people like decorators catering service so many people will survive on the discretionary spending more money is spent in that manner not for our essentials so when uh, there is inflation you cannot spend uh, so, sorry sorry uh, so you cannot involve in the i mean discretionary spending by which the gdp will contract now in india this year and coming year there is no need to worry about the gdp because both the years are election now even in this year also five states are going for the elections and coming year general elections for lok sabha and even election for many state legislative assemblies abnormal pumping of money by the people who are contesting in the election beyond the state budget they may spend if you um, add both lok sabha and assembly election definitely okay yes now and health issues yeah too cold too heat definitely if it, if it is cold you will get some some sort of disease if it is heat again you will get new sort of disease yes and even you know the flooding just now i told about the hyderabad even the villages also even even by the side of rivers and even uh, uh, because of flooding valuable valuable agricultural lands will get inundated or submerged and you know that because now what is i will ask you only uh, uh, you have to answer me in one word bletchley declaration deals with what concept that's all only one word answer i want Of course, I know that Amrishar sir dealt with this topic in the morning. Okay, Bletchley Declaration is dealing with the artificial intelligence to encourage the artificial intelligence and also to mitigate the problems associated with the artificial intelligence. And the place Bletchley is related to what? No, it is having some historic significance. What is that? What is that? You don't know? Sir has dealt in the morning. Excellent, Yamini, Aparna, and Varsha. It, it is a, a place related to World War II, where in that place, some language was decoded. Decoded. Nazi's language was decoded. Okay? Okay? Yes. Now, Bletchley Park, the historic site known for its crucial role in World War II, he is hosting the world's first global summit on artificial intelligence. And uh, along with Britain, along with 28 other countries and the European Union, published the Bletchley Declaration at Bletchley Park, England. So, of course, uh, as Sir Lelt, it is uh, to increase the global collaboration in the AI and to use it for good purpose. And it is having many challenges and how to tackle that challenges. Okay? Of course, now, about Bletchley Declaration, Im historical importance of Bletchley Park. During the war, Bletchley Park played a pivotal role in breaking the unbreakable Enigma code, which was used by the Nazis. The site is also known for creating the Turing bomb, a device that expedited code-breaking efforts. So you, you may get the question from this point, not from the declaration. This is a how the UPSC will ask the questions.
The site is also known for creating the Turing bomb, a device that experimented code breaking efforts. Bletchley Park contributed to the development of the Colossus, often considered the world's first programmable electronic computer. Now everything is programmable. Smartwatch, your phone, you may live without food, but you may not live without phone. Yes. Now, of course, everybody, every student, they will go through the papers daily. Why mercury contamination is in the news? Why mercury contamination is in the news? Especially Achilles Sri will daily spend nearly eight hours to study the current affairs and remaining four hours for subject. Okay. See, many birds many birds they are having the more residues of mercury or they are facing death in the tropical regions especially in the places where there is a, a gold mining at small level at artisan level means the common people without a modern process they will involve in extracting the gold gold they will use the mercury to make a mixture from which it will become very easy to extract the gold. Okay? Yes. Tropical birds in Central and South America are exhibiting signs of mercury contamination due to artisanal and small scale gold mining operations according to a new study. What is artisanal handicraft? Small scale. Okay, of course. Now, gold mining is at a abnormal, uh, I mean, mechanized level, but still, this kind of things will run parallelly. Now, take the example of rat hole mining. I told in our routine classes, rat hole mining in Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh, where small children are sent to a small hole to collect the minerals. And even on many occasions, the children will face death. And uh, even the important uh, mine, uh, gold mine in India is Kolar and Hatti. And one mine belonging to Kolar and Hatti is stopped by Supreme Court citing the environmental reasons. What is the name of that mine? The mine which is stopped by Supreme Court citing the ecological, citing causing harm to the ecological imbalances. Nobody. This is how you people are studying. Yes, good offline student. Champion. Excellent Akilasri and Asma Jabin. Champion. Champion is the gold mine in the Kolar and Hatti mines, which was stopped by Supreme Court. And even it is also deepest gold mine. Okay? Yes. Now, leave it. Birds living within 7 kilometers of uh, gold mining activity were found to have Mercury concentration over four times higher than those in uh, other areas. And you know, uh, so mercury will have a lot of adverse impact on living creatures, including human beings also. Mercury is used in gold mining because it forms an amalgam with gold, allowing for the extraction of gold from ore because this is the small method or our uh, cottage, uh, cottage industry method, not a method at... Uh, High level. Okay? Yes. The research suggests that mercury may be playing a role in the declining biodiversity of tropical birds which have been observed in recent days. Yes, no doubt in it. It may be one reason. But even in the villages of uh, uh, especially, I, I don't know about North India, in South India, birds number has declined because earlier when we were uh, uh, growing the javar, we face a problem with the birds. Now we are not facing problem with the birds. 
now we are facing problem with the monkeys large number of monkeys they are destroying the jawar fields not only jawar fields corn fields and even cotton fields also yes cotton fields also yesterday one farmer met me and he said that uh, when uh, the initial flowering stage will be very sweet and they are consuming that automatically the crop is getting damaged okay yes mercury contamination has been linked to neurological illness of course your science teachers will teach that immune diseases and reproductive failure in both humans and birds birds are considered sensitive indicators of ecosystem health and are often referred to as the canary in the gold mine or simply canary in the any mine what is the meaning of canary in the gold mine or uh, for our uh, understanding purpose canary in the coal mine anybody know that canary in the for our understanding purpose canary in the coal mine okay see canary in the gold mine i will uh, make you to understand by citing an example take the example of coal mines coal mines earlier had the problem of methane methane even now also we are having the problem of methane but now we are uh, what we are doing with the technology we are extracting that methane we have discussed in our routine classes cold bed methane we have discussed cold bed methane in olden days the miners used to carry the bird in the cage along with them into the deep mine if bird dies then the people used to come outside immediately that there is some threat in the mine the threat may encounter in course of time because animals will face that uh, adverse effect uh, early than the human beings that is the meaning of the canary in the gold mine or canary in the canary in the coal mine so it is a it, it is how birds will allow us to understand the environment or changes in the environment i hope everybody understood this yes <laughs> see here for their ability to signal environmental issues now so un report on groundwater extraction every dop counts and you know the condition of uh, the groundwater in india is uh, uh, becoming stressful and many many aquifers are getting degraded or depleted means their recharge level is very less compared to the extraction level and more than 60% of groundwater level in india used for the irrigation take the example of paddy take the example of sugarcane that is for agriculture even for horticulture also but to a less extent if i am not wrong no horticultural crop will require water like paddy yes no plants mango etc whatever you take yes a recent united nations university report warns that 27 out of uh, 31 aquifers in india are depleting faster than they can be replenished due to excessive groundwater extraction so we are extracting more okay we are extracting more now you know what is meant by aquifer it is a strata land strata which is having the properties like permeability permeability and also porosity what is the meaning of porosity what is the meaning of porosity having voids having pores is called as porosity 
if it is having air packets then only it will hold the water so for a for a good aquifer porosity is must now what is permeability it is a property of the liquid to allow sorry it is a property of the strata to allow any fluid through it or anything through it so now suppose if it is the ground level and uh, if you dig a bore well or tube well what you say for a good aquifer it should have both uh, porosity and also um, permeability and the bottom bottom it should be impermeable the bottom layer should be impermeable why if bottom layer is also permeable the water will go into the deep earth deep earth levels so a good aquifer should have the porosity permeability then only when you rig the uh, sorry when you drill the tube well the water will get collected here and it is used for various purposes so this is called as the aquifer which can which can release water when we pump that is called as the aquifer so now the study says that 27 out of 31 aquifers in india are depleting faster then they can be replenished due to excessive groundwater extraction now some facts india is the largest user of groundwater remember that nowadays such kind of questions are coming like in the last group on prelims which country in the world world is having more irrigated area like that okay 87 but not even i told you 60% 87% of ground water is used for irrigation and i told you thousands of liters of water is needed to grow 1 kg of paddy 1 kg of paddy currently 67% of ground water units are safe means extraction is less than 70% but in course of time because of population explosion even they may also enter into the unsafe condition and if the paddy cult like see take the example of telangana the area under paddy cultivation has doubled since the formation of telangana yes record level there is production of paddy in telangana luckily um, there is demand for paddy if anything happens in adverse manner the price will collapse like anything if people shift to the millets if they become health conscious okay yes and uh, extraction is very high in haryana punjab and rajasthan and you know earlier farmers used to commit uh, suicides in only south india now there are farmer suicides in punjab and haryana and you know punjab is a state where they will practice agriculture as entrepreneurship understand why the farmers are committing suicide because cost of inputs has increased as ground water got depleted more money they have to spend to rig a bore well and more more length of pipe and more power to i mean extract the water everything more automatically profits will squeeze okay yes now climate concerns in southwest india increasing temperatures might hinder ground water replenishment and uh, so now these are important legal and regulatory frameworks for ground water in the british era suppose if there is water in my land in the british era la of course for a long period we have accepted that and recognized that i am the owner of the water <coughs> but now public domain though the water is in my land if it is causing harm to the public then i should not use actually if you want to dig a tube well you have to take the permission of government now but you know nobody will take the permission if you stop people on the roads who are driving the vehicles at least 10% people will not have the driving licenses <laughs> but nobody will stop them nowadays police in hyderabad are interested in taking photos rather than stopping the vehicles like you people taking the selfies
So these points are very important. Now, Article 21 recognizes the fundamental right to clean water under the right to life. Yes, it is inferred right. Means Supreme Court in courts of judgments has made this provision. Central Groundwater Authority established by the Environment Protection Act 1986 responsible for framing groundwater policies and programs. Okay? Yes. Even we have discussed the last class also. Supreme Court. Yes. Supreme Court said that water is a public public property. Upholds the public trust doctrine 2004 treating groundwater as a public resource, not private ownership. This is very important. Whereas 1882, yes, Indian Easement Act 1882, which was formulated in the colonial area, says that water belongs to the owner of the land. But still, many people who are, who are having lands adjoining Hyderabad, they will rig the tube wells and they will sell the water, causing harm to the groundwater. But nobody will care. Nobody will care. Okay? Yes. So remember this. Government schemes, government initiatives, for everything you... Uh, for every program or uh, for every sector, you have to remember the government initiatives like agriculture, irrigation, environment, etc. Government schemes, initiatives like Atal Bhujal Yojana, it is very important. Atal Bhujal Yojana. Jal Shakti Abhiyan and Aquifer Mapping. And it, of course, just now I told you what is meant by Aquifer. And Central Groundwater Board was established in 1970. Yes. And you know, National Green Tribunal, whose aim is to conserve the ecology and environment. Okay? Now. And nowadays, if any person is pumping the effluents in the nearby river, he has to pay the money. He has to pay the money. Yes. Addresses groundwater contamination case by case with polluters bearing remission cost. And uh, international initiatives. The United Nations Water Summit on Groundwater 2022 organized to raise awareness on groundwater conservation and groundwater making the invisible visible campaign run by UN Water throughout 2022. Whenever you get a question related to water, if you write such kind of statements in the mens, you will get excellent marks. And you know, National Aquifer Mapping and Jal Shakti Abhiyan 2009 launched in 256 water stress districts to improve groundwater conditions. And even we have discussed uh, Mission Kakatiya in Telangana for Telangana main student. Mission Kakatiya also helped to increase the groundwater levels as we clean the silt from the tanks. And such kind of program is also initiated by the central government in the name of Mission Amrit Sarovar, which we have discussed many times. Now, Atal Bhujal Yojana. Atal Bhujal Yojana is, where, is a centrally, totally centrally sponsored scheme or a state sponsored scheme or there is any uh, contribution of states to that program? What is the contribution of state, center, or World Bank to the Atal Bhujal Yojana? What is the contribution of uh, World Bank or center or state in the Atal Bhujal Yojana? Such kind of questions you will encounter in the UPSC prelims. Akhilasri, madam. 60-40. Sixty centers, forty state. Jagan, fifty, thirty, twenty. Because fifty. Anybody from online side, offline side, people are not interested. Anybody? Yes, excellent. Swamiji had it. 50 is to 50, World Bank and India. 50 is to 50, World Bank and India. If I am not wrong, we shall check. 
यस एक्सलेंट स्वामी अटल भूजल योजना इज ए सेंट्रल सेक्टर स्कीम फॉर सस्टेनेबल मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ग्राउंड वाटर टू द पीपल पार्टिसिपेशन एंड ऑल्सो वाटर यूजर्स एसोसिएशन ऑफकोर्स आई विल फॉरवर्ड दिस पीडीएफ डोंट वरी एंड रिमेंबर लॉन्च्ड इन 2020 मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ जल शक्ति एंड गवर्नमेंट फंडिंग government of india and world bank on a 50 is to 50 basis that is very important such sort of important programs questions will be in that line only and i mean excluding swami nobody is able to answer yes <laughs> participating state not all states gujarat haryana karnataka mp maharashtra rajasthan and up and selection criteria based on down water exploitation degradation etc etc okay and focus areas automatically like our corporate colleges they will focus on two types of students toppers they will focus more and also weak students they will focus on weak students also because at least to they want to see that they will pass the intermediate examination okay yeah now water conservation inventions we have discussed in our routine classes micro irrigation micro irrigation and also watershed management tell me an example of micro irrigation mr sudhir yes sprinkler irrigation drift irrigation okay now so first and foremost we have to shift to the crops crops which requires less water that is the millets etc that is a common thing and efficient watering with the help of the micro irrigation and even technology adoption is also very important like testing our soil what is the moisture in the soil what sort of crops will suit that that is also very important and awareness education institutional innovations yes like uh, modern methods of irrigation etc everything is needed and draw drought resistant varieties or a variety which can be grown in less water even we have discussed in earlier classes um, many varieties have created where they will require very less amount of water like dwarf varieties uh, dwarf variety of paddy it requires less water i mean less water compared to the ordinary paddy variety now children as uh, potential citizens what is the meaning means children are allowed to participate in the policy making process now take the example of malala malala yusuf jai worked for children and even she was given the nobel prize which person shared nobel prize along with malala yusuf jai madam asma jabeen which person shared nobel prize along with malala yes excellent kaila satyarthi even he was also working for the welfare and well being of the children that okay children as political citizen refer to the concept of recognizing and involving children in the political and decision making process of a society or nation because many children did that they proved their caliber <laughs> it emphasizes the united nations conventions on on the rights of the child and it focuses on the right to participation among children child participation should go beyond school based initiatives and be recognized as a robust and sustained institutional process so many people like you are having 
Greta Thunberg, Swedish teenager known for climate activism. Malala, Pakistani activist advocating for girls' education, spoke out against the Taliban's ban on girls' education. Yes, even they killed the girls. Okay? Pakistani, then survived an attack, symbol of girls' right to education worldwide. Excellent, excellent contribution. And Thandi, co founder of the Black Lives Matter Youth Vanguard, advocates for racial justice and equality. Okay, try to remember this. And you see here Emma Goldsles, survivor of the Parkland School shooting in the US, co founded. The never again MSD movement advocating for stricter gun culture, gun laws to prevent further school uh, uh, shootings. So, in America, everybody is having the right to arm, and they will, uh, I mean, resort for opening fire on their teachers. If that is the case, then I should wear the bulletproof jackets and bulletproof shield to take the class. If not, on one fine day, you will shoot me. <laughs> okay? Yes. Pichwari painting, actually Pichwari painting means the painting of the old days. That is the meaning of this sentence. Um, a big exhibition. Chennai's college is existing, uh, sorry, hosting an art exhibition showcasing Pichwari painting, some of which date back 350 years ago. And the place of the origin you may encounter in the examination, especially for UPSC students, we have discussed various types of paintings, at least for our old students like Bhagwati, Varsha, etc. And new students also we will take up Pichwari painting and Rajput school of painting, Pattachitra painting, Aprabramsa painting. We have discussed various types of paintings. Okay? Yes. The paintings use stone pigments for gold and silver tones and vegetable dyes for vibrant. So all uh, they got from the nature, not chemical colors. Okay? Even we have discussed uh, uh, paintings in our routine classes. Even uh, whose period uh, is called as the golden age of painting? Madam Asma Jabin. Whose period is called as golden age of painting? Excellent. Excellent. Jangir's period is called as golden age of painting. Golden age of painting. And you know, and Humayun brought two popular painters from Persia. Abdul Samad and Syed Ali Tabrezi. Okay. Yes. Excellent. That is Jangir's period is called as golden age of painting. Yes. Take care. And even we have discussed many times and many things with regard to painting. The place where many people will involve in painting. What is the name of that place where many people will involve in painting? Like uh, this is our classroom. Many students are sitting in front of me and I am taking a class. This is called as classroom. Excellent Bhagavati Achalyar. The place where Many people will sit together and paint. That is called as Achalyar. Excellent Bhagavati and Priyanka, etc. So these people forgot everything with regard to painting bad offline students. Yes. <laughs> now, I will ask you another question with regard to painting. We will use, in that system, we will use egg as the base. What is the technique called when we use the egg or any flower as the base?
to paint. What is the technique called? Excellent, Amma. Excellent, Varsha. Only two people. Yes, Yamini ji. Four people. That is called as tempera technique. Tempera technique. Tempera technique. Excellent, excellent. Yes. The detail, so sorry. Vibrant colors like orange, red, chrome, yellow, and kesri. Kesri, you know? Kumkum. Yes. In recent years, there, there has been a resurgence in Pichwai art, attracting young buyers and encouraging artists to return to their hometowns in Rajasthan to learn and continue the traditional techniques. Now they are earning thousands of rupees. Yes. You see online the price of paintings. Abnormal prices. 30,000, 40,000. Okay? Yes. It is an example of uh, the Pichwari painting. Okay? Now, you know, now India, not only India, world is shifting from diesel petrol vehicles or gasoline vehicles to the electric vehicles. Okay? So now, there should be some standard, some standard to have the electric charges for public purpose. Suppose Swami is going in an electric car. He wants to charge. And there should be some standards. Now I am having cell phone. I am for example. And if I want to charge, I will ask what is the voltage and that C type port or B type port. So, there are certain standards. So, Indian Bureau of Standards of India has also developed a standard for these charging point such that all the manufacturers will follow that specifications to establish the charging points and automatically nobody will face any problem. Okay? Earlier, we used to follow the international standards. Now, after this, we are going to follow our own standards. And when you are having you know, these charging points time and again or en route our uh, journey, there is no need to carry our charger. See, for two-wheeler, you can see that charging system. It is bulky. Maybe the total weight may be two or three kgs, if I am not wrong. And again, you are having the problem of AC charging, DC charging. There are different types of charging methods. Okay? Yes. The Bureau of Indian Standards has approved an indigenous AC and AC alternative current and DC direct current combined charging character standard known as IS 17017 part 2 under section 7 2023 for light electric vehicles. But they are costly. But nobody is hesitating to purchase that. 25 lakhs MG hectare hybrid 25 lakhs. And even bullet now 3 lakhs. Yes. Yeah. The standard is the world's first of its kind and has been developed in India. That is great. It shows how, how we are moving in an advanced manner. No doubt in it. The initiative allows original equipment. Of course, all these things I told, nothing to worry. The Bureau of Indian Standards is India's national standards body. It is a part of the Department of Consumer Affairs. Remember this, which is under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. The BAS was established by the Bureau of Indian Standards Act 2016, which came into effect on October 12, 2017. The BAS is responsible for standardization, marking, quality certification of goods. Yeah. Hallmarking, we have discussed. Hallmarking is given for what, Mr. Surendra? Hallmarking is given for what? Hallmarking for? <laughs> it is for gold. We have discussed many times. BIS, Bureau of Indian Standards for gold. Bad boy. Okay, no issue. Why carbon nanofluorates are in news? Carbon nanofluorates are in news. 
why carbon nano fluorides are in news what is meant by fluorite fluorite means a, uh, a, a i mean flowering type structure if you take the example of cauliflower you will have small 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 uh, that uh, flowers they are called as the fluorides why carbon nano fluorides are in the news so these people are aparna and madhuri and sirisha okay 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 rahul is saying iit bombay yes akilashree exactly correct so carbon nano fluorides are having high high capacity or capacity to absorb the solar insulation at a rapid rate than the solar photovoltaic cells excellent okay yes so now we can use this to boil anything including water or any liquids researchers at the indian institute of technology bombay have created carbon nano fluorides that can efficiently convert sunlight into heat faster than the solar photovoltaic cells what are carbon nano fluorides carbon nano fluorides are a unique nano structure composed of carbon atoms arranged in a distinctive fluorite like morphology fluorite like a piece of cauliflower they have a high surface area and various potential application in fields such as material sciences etc these fluorides can absorb light at multiple frequencies including infrared visible light ultraviolet making them highly efficient at converting and converting sunlight into thermal energy one square meter coating of these nano fluorides can vaporize 5 liters of water in an hour surpassing commercial solar stills that is the problem with the technology why i am saying problem now if swami is having a industry which you which manufactures solar photovoltaic cells within one month they will be replaced by this nano fluorides then his industry will be subjected to loss or sick like once online came into the existence every coaching institute is facing the problem okay remember it can provide ecologically sustainable heating and has potential uses in various sectors including construction and healthcare of course many thermal plants also you can all you can use if you generate uh, electricity and and electricity can be used for many purposes that's all yeah so such kind of questions can also be asked in the interviews also suppose if you belong to uh, this category of uh, degree suppose if a civil engineer uh, uh, faces the interview then at least one question will be from the civil engineering background definitely like our gnani uh, uh, okay yes so th this lo this look like the kal cauliflower now premature mortality from major non communicable communicable diseases what is meant by non communicable diseases like stroke heart stroke diabetes many people are dying suddenly uh doctors you know a doctor who performed uh, thousands of uh, heart surgeries died because of heart attack in maybe in gujarat if i am not wrong at the age of 41 or less than 41 40 or 41 heart stroke because abnormal stress strain and challenges from technology 2g 3g 4g if you know java software they will ask the bullet software once bullet software you will learn they will go for tar software if tar software is over they will go for compass yes so now in india not only in india 70% deaths in the world are because of this kind of disease see take the example of diabetes if you go on using the diabetic tablets it will impact the kidneys and kidney failure you will face death you should give first importance for your health in life the same thing i will do i will give first importance for health now india is expected to fall short of meeting the target set by the 
World Health Organization and the UN Sustainable Development Goals in reducing premature deaths from major non-communicable diseases. Yes, we are unable to reach that target because of sudden deaths of many people. Even after COVID-19, young people are facing the strokes. <laughs> An analysis by the Indian Council of Medical Research indicates that India's progress toward reducing premature mortality from four major uh, NCDs, including cancer, cardiovascular disease, chronic respiratory diseases, and diabetes, will likely to miss the, the World Health Organization target of 25% reduction by 2025 compared to 2010. So it is highly impossible. Okay? Diabetes, now it has become common. Blood pressure, common. Abnormal stress. Of course, Agartala Kora railway station, sir, told in the morning, if I am not wrong. Yes. Now, what is the issue with regard to coal necessary for India's green transition? Yes. The problem here is, see, now we are shifting towards the clean energy, where we are not using the coal. See, some states' economy is totally dependent on the coal, like Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, or any regions where they are having a lot of coal resources. What happened? Because of the people shifting to the non-coal energies, the demand for coal has reduced drastically. Now the government lost the revenue because earlier they used to collect the royalties on the coal. Royalty. Others says etc. They lost the revenue. Second thing, in the coal transportation, many people were involved. Vehicles, rails, etc. And even in excavation of coal, many labor were oriented. Sorry, many labor were engaged. And associated industries. See, 